time to welcome my Sunday morning paper reviewer into the studio, and it's James McKinney who joins me. Hello. Hello. Now, I've not met you before, but they tell me you're a poet. I am, yes. <laughs> a writer. <laughs> uh, tell us about how you became a poet then. Well, I never really had got into poetry at all at school because we were never taught it and it just kind of happened by chance really um i kind of started listening to instrumental music from film scores um kind of went from there and started writing to them and it kind of just became poetry now really. that's interesting instrumental music from film scores yeah that's an odd thing for a teenage boy to be doing well the thing <laughs> is when you watch a movie and it comes to that point and it's the emotional part where the yeah, tissues yeah. come out mm-hmm. and you know and the music in the background really makes that that moment you take the music away and it wouldn't be as interesting so that kind of thought got thinking to that oh I like that music and started buying them off internet um, and then from there it kind of like start, I started writing and it kind of happened that I was writing to music without even knowing it really and did the words come easily not at first because I didn't really have like any background of mm-hmm. writing so it wasn't really taught at school so it kind of went messing about playing around like with words and seeing what happened and then it kind of took off from there and everything and done quite a lot of it over the years and you, you're known as a, a series writer, I'm told. Yes, yeah. It's just kind of like, uh, well, I just kind of write as it goes along, really. I don't really know. <laughs> <laughs> and do you make a living as a poet? Um, not yet, but it's right. getting that way. Oh, oh that's yes, good. It's getting really busy. And how do, you, how do you approach it? Do you approach it as a kind of proper nine-to-five job? Do you go and sit down and, and sit at a desk, or does it come well, you know, on the bus? It's, yeah, on, it's kind of like that on the bus. Yeah. Um, with the headphones on, walking down the street pen and paper in the pocket and just writing really yeah i think if i tried to sit down and do it it wouldn't work i think it's the kind of thing where you've just got to do it as you go along when it comes into your head otherwise you'd feel as though you were doing it and and it would be a pressure on you there to write and it wouldn't work sounds to me that you need music yeah to get your inspiration yeah i do definitely and so does your poetry have a kind of songwriting feel to it well they kind of work as lyrics as well i mean poetry is lyrics all songs exactly the same and um that's the kind of way I look at it. I just look at it, I write down however I feel at the time and the way the music makes me feel, which is what I use for the emotions in the mm. poetry. And is it always the stuff from soundtracks or can it be anything? Uh, it's probably soundtracks because <laughs> if, I, if there's any singing in it, it kind of puts me off while right. I'm writing. So it has to be kind of a classic instrumental film score, that kind of thing, which which really works. What's on your portable music device at the moment? Well, then? I actually like the, the Pride and Prejudice soundtrack, okay. you know, the Kira Knightley film, which I really love. Um, and that's got some really lovely music in that. Let me go over here. I think it might have gone. We've had the... um, It's been hanging around in this studio for days. And now, there it is. Let me give you that. What's that? That is the soundtrack to the Nelson Mandela film, The Long Walk to Freedom. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that's really nice. Is it actually a photo film score? Oh, yeah. That'd be brilliant. I do actually say... That's the kind of things I I use when I'm writing, is film scores. And if I'm watching movies... I'm the first person to listen out for the film scores as they come on and think, oh, I like that. So you're not watching the film necessarily. Yeah, well, I'm doing work, yeah, at the same time. But, yeah, I like it. I like the idea that you can get emotions from songs and yes. then use them to write as well. Have you got any examples of your work with you? I have. I can read one if, if you'd like. Yes, please do. OK. It's called um, Swirling Mist. I came across a swirling mist beyond the realms of borrowed time. It lingered in a cloud-like haze and consumed the workings of my mind. For as I stood within its grasp, a stranger in a foreign place, although it bore no eyes as such, I felt its gaze upon my face, and as I tried to turn my head, its line of sight remained in view, for everywhere my vision roamed, so my panic grew and grew, and though the day was not yet done, the darkness came and stole its light, allowing the painful memories from my past, the freedom of a second life, for as I fell down to my knees, Engulfed in thoughts I used to own, the familiar face of sorrow smiled to remind me of my journey home. That's very good. Thank you. What was that written to then? Well, it was a depressing piece of music. <laughs> <laughs> um, just um, different types of music. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't normally, I use different types for, for one piece, so it could be two pieces of music in there, one. And it's just kind of like that was written to music, and so that how the music made you feel at the time, and mm. so that's how I kind of way I work. Can people buy your stuff? It can. It's available on Amazon. Mm-hmm. There's, there's two versions. There's a normal, a cheap version, and then a, a one with um, which is a bit more expensive, which is signed and f- is photographed. So I like photography. Yes. And it's also available on Kindle okay. for download. And what's it called? In between the lines. Okay. Bye.
James McKinnon, eh? Um, and you're running some workshops as well. Yes, with the council and the um, library service on the, we've got a date here, the 25th of January at 12 to 2 at um, Western Valley Library Centre. We're doing poetry workshops for 14 to 19 year olds, teaching them the kind of style that I write mm-hmm. and how they can, if, if they haven't written before, they can have a go and do all that. It'd be interesting because when you, when you think about 14 to 19 year olds, you might think about. Well, they're possibly not listening to soundtracks for a start. Yes. But, but if, if they're listening to rap and hip-hop and stuff like that, very poetic, isn't yes. it? Yes, that's the kind of thing. We wanted to go for 1490 because also some of the stuff covered is probably a bit too much for the young, younger generation. Mm. Um, plus also at that age, there's a lot of teenage angst. Um, and yes. it, it is a good way to get all the stuff that you bottle up out on, on, when you write it down. It does work for me. I kind of that's what I do. Um, so it might actually help them as well as learning a new skill as well fantastic just give that a plug again when is it and where is it uh, that is the 25th of january um western Fire library center 12 till 2 and it's 14 to 19 year olds brilliant and we'll find out what's in the papers after martha reeves and the vandellas james mckinney is my sunday morning paper reviewer guest uh, we're going to start with some bad news if you like the new year's eve fireworks yep um this year unfortunately um big ben's big bang has been cancelled oh yes um, last year it went wrong with the pyrotechnics and they are decided they're not going to do it this year. That's a shame. Yeah. It's always nice to see the fireworks going up at, in London, isn't it's it? It's probably budget cuts. Well, <laughs> uh, do you know, it's interesting. I, I thought last year were OK, but maybe it was the year before I was thinking about it where they had that fantastic soundtrack that was going yeah. on in the background as well. Was that the year before last? Well, I think it was 2011-12, it went OK. Right. 2012-13, it failed. So. OK. Um, it must have been 2011-12. Oh, goodness, where's the time gone? Got a good memory, though, obviously. <laughs> no, I just love the music so much. I remember downloading it from SoundCloud because uh, the guy who'd mixed it had b- uh, put it all up there. And I thought, oh, OK, I'll, I'll have a look at that. And it was a really good soundtrack, so that's a shame. So, yeah, so we, we normally watch, you know, the um, Jules Holland, yes. actually. We put that on the Hogmanay thing, so yes. that, that's quite good. But it'd be obviously no point watching TV for Big Ben this year. No, well, you can still watch it for the chimes, just not the fireworks, yes, I guess. Yes, yes. Um, are you a big fan of New Year? Um, yeah, we do. The whole family get together um, yeah. and we all sit there and have the TV on waiting for the countdown. Then we do party poppers and oh, okay. um, it's really good fun. Yeah, I really enjoy it. So are you more of a New Year's Eve person than a Christmas person? No, I love Christmas. Do you? Yes, the Christmas is, yeah. Even though I'm an old person. <laughs> um, Christmas is the best for me. Yeah, I'm still a child, really. Well, that's a good way to be, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I do. I love Christmas. And even though you you know what you're getting at Christmas, I still love the idea of Christmas. And There's always a surprise from Father Christmas, though, Yes, I do put the cookies by the fire do plate, you? yes. Brilliant. Well, otherwise he wouldn't deliver, would he? Yes, exactly. Uh, it's been pretty foul weather of late. Yes, right. Um, according to the... Sunday Telegraph, there's going to be a month of rain to blow in for the new year, which is another thing, on top of the fireworks, another bad thing to look forward to. Um, But also, on the Sunday Times, apparently the South Pole is a hot ticket for day trippers. A day trip to the South Pole? Yes, well, you know, it's the opposite end of the scale. So people who are moaning about the weather also want to go to the South Pole and um, enjoy the coldness over there. Mm, Interesting. I guess, uh, I don't know, is a month of rain better than a month of snow? Probably it is. Yes, yes, because snow sits and then you get it everywhere. You can't get rid of it. Once it comes, it's here forever, isn't it? I wonder whether we will get any this year. It well, was it was quite late last year, wasn't it? L- kind of late February, early well, March that we got the snow. About last December year. the fourth, we got a I day say last year. Still, obviously yes, this year. Yes, yes. December the fourth, we got it last year, Did and, we? Then, and then didn't come till about the fourteenth of Jan um, this year. Right. Not that I'm good with figures. I've got eight o'clock, eight o'clock a.m. <laughs> <laughs> but I just remember, yeah. Mm. Um, and and then January, February were pretty bad this year for snow. Um, they said we, they then said we were going to have like three three or four months of winter. Yes. And then they've changed their mind now. Well, this is the problem, isn't it? I mean, I've got a very good friend who's a weather forecaster and he says that actually you can't really forecast. You yeah. can only now cast. You can yeah. look out of the window and see what's happening now. They do 90-day forecasts, which I think oh, is... Oh, well, you just can't. Because it's silly, isn't Mother it? Nature changes their mind so often, doesn't she? Yeah, and so I just kind of... I, like you say, I look out the window and you can tell pretty much what the weather's going to yeah, be like yeah. by looking dark clouds and rain really I think they can probably tell almost a couple of days ahead but that's as much as they can do not 90 days it always makes me laugh because the daily express is very good for its uh, weather because if the daily express is out its way we'd be under six foot of snow by now yeah i know it's doom and gloom yeah, isn't it yeah absolutely um money is something that people will be thinking about a, a lot over the coming few weeks i would imagine because those credit card bills will start plopping onto yes, the mat soon will. enough but um, the mortgage, again on the Observer, at the front page, the mortgage rise will plunge as £13 million paid out for Christmas. Mm-hmm. So there's debt. And then in, on the same paper on the inside, there's a feel-good factor is shoppers 
rise on the high street and there's loads of people spending so it's a yeah. bit of a contradiction I've you kind know. of got to put myself in that because I've spent a fortune in the last week or so have you? Yeah. funny isn't it because you get to you, you do all the spending up to Christmas and then you get Christmas Day and Boxing Day well although people were queuing at 12.25 at midnight 25 oh really for, for sales in Birmingham and then you think oh well I might as well buy that because it's quite cheap yeah, yeah. Father Christmas didn't bring me that. I might buy that for yes, myself. Yes. And before you know it, you I spent have to a fortune. Buy it, yes. Yeah, exactly. But again, again, New Year's Eve, people go out shopping for the New Year's Day for clothes, mainly clothes shopping. I would have thought. Do you think? Yeah, we've been. We go to Milton Keynes, mm-hmm. um, and they're packed, like all the Primarks and everywhere. People buying those New Year clothes, you know. New Year, New You, maybe. Yeah. Well, they say that every year, but it's the oh, same yeah, day. Yeah, it just, yeah. just ticks over to the next day. <laughs> <laughs> We make so much of the festive season, don't we? And they are just days. Yeah. People get very stressed out about it. I know. I, I was saying to my wife, um, basically when it switches over, you know, people expect the whole world to have changed when you go to New Year, but it's only like the next day, yes. you know, and then people get depressed and then miserable, but it is just another day, isn't it? Yeah. But we need to be positive and we need to oh, look yeah. forward and 2014 will be a good year. You need to set goals. That's yes. what you need to do. Well, that's what resolution... Are you going to set New, new Year's resolution? Do I you have do? one to read more books. Okay. Because I love reading, I've d- neglected it this year, um, but I'm reading a book now and I really like them. So that's the new year resolution to make time to read. Okay, that's not a bad one. Just the making time is yeah, a pretty that, good yeah. thing. I need to set a clock to go off when it's time to read. It's funny because I was saying to you when we were listening to Martha Reeves and the Vandellas, I'm always quite jealous of the Sunday morning paper reviewers because you come in at nine o'clock, quarter to nine as you did, um, and you've got an hour to read the papers. To read the pa- when do you ever get time to do stuff like I that? I have to say I'm lazy. I don't really buy papers because I have like the BBC app on yeah. my iPad and it just pings when there's late when there's the latest news mm. and I just look on that. I think the kind of papers are disappearing now. If well, people- that'll be interesting. I mean, that, what I like about, particularly about the Sunday papers, if I get a chance to read them, is all the, the comment and the in-depth analysis that they do and the, the, the proper journalism that goes into it. But they're so big. The papers are massive and there's so many sections <laughs> of them. Know. You open it, everything falls out. <laughs> Uh, there's a bit about David Beckham that you wanted to mention. Yeah, he's been denied an OBE. Has which, he now? Which is a shocker to him and Posh. Yes. Um, for his services rendered. Um, and yet they were commenting on how people who had lesser years and were taking cocaine and drugs, um, mm. they've got OBEs, which is a bit, you know, some few scandalous OBEs given out to people that probably didn't deserve them. And, of course, obviously David's not happy I went. I didn't know you could be denied OBEs. Oh, yeah. Well, they do an honours list, and yes. then they narrow it down as to who's on the honours list, and oh, obviously okay. he didn't make the honours list, oh. which has got to be a blow, really. He's one of those people, isn't he, that, that he's, a, he's a real icon. Yeah. He's, he's you know, he's, he, well, he's almost famous for being famous now, because obviously the football has taken a back seat. Oh, but, definitely, yeah. But brilliant footballer, seems to be a brilliant dad, Yeah. seems to be a fantastic husband, all-round nice guy. Where's the problem? I just don't understand the honours list sometimes. I think they're a bit, you know, political or whatever they are. I don't know. Um, but they haven't called me. Uh, I look for my name on there. It wasn't on there. <laughs> you need somebody to nominate you. Yes, that's what... I might get David to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Give him a ring. Oh, you might not know me, but... Yeah. And, and finally, Justin Bieber's retiring. Yes. That's bad news. I, I was gutted, actually. I bet you yeah. were, yeah, yeah. He's 19, and I think he started when he was about 12. So he, he's had, he said that he wants a break because he hasn't stopped since his, he started. And he was found on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, just the craziness about it is that some people tweeted saying that their world's ended now. You know, Christmas is ruined. All the believers, the people that are real fans of Justin Bieber. Yeah, well, I can <laughs> almost understand that. If you if you are a massive fan of somebody and suddenly they're not going to be around anymore, yeah. it's almost like a bereavement, isn't it? He's had a weird year this year, though. He's had a very controversial year. He has. And to be fair, he probably needs a break, doesn't he? He's on he? a meltdown, I think. Yeah. yeah. He did He did announce it on the radio, actually, uh, and beknownst to his management that he was actually retiring. <laughs> <laughs> and then they come back and said that he wasn't retiring. And then they've come back out and said he is. Yeah. But I think he's taken a year off. I don't think he's retiring, retiring. Mm, we'll see. Yeah. Uh, it's been a pleasure to meet you, James. Thank you very Thank much you. for coming in. Just remind us when those workshops are. Yes, they're going to be 25th of Jan, um, 12 till 2, um, Saturday at Western Favre Library Centre. And your book is called? In Between the Lines. Thank you for coming in. Thank you. Original British drama. 